No fewer than 30 persons were killed in Plateau State in the early hours of Wednesday by gunmen who attacked Pahaselek Village, Mango local government area. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, President Balotinibu has reiterated his administration's commitment to implementing necessary interventions in the oil and gas industry in accordance with the Petroleum Industry Act, PIA. During a meeting with the delegation from Chevron Corporation, led by President of Chevron International Exploration and Production, Mr. Clay Neff, Tinubu reiterated the importance of strengthening Nigeria's partnership with Chevron. He welcomed Chevron's dedication to expanding investments in shallow and deep water operations in Nigeria, specifically mentioning the ongoing $1.4 billion drilling project with the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL. At number two, no fewer than 30 persons were killed in Plateau State in the early hours of Wednesday by gunmen who attacked Pahashlek Village, Mango local government area of the state. Reports indicate that the victims, predominantly women and children, had sought refuge in the house of a community leader in the area on Tuesday night, following earlier unrest in Mango Town during the day. However, the gunmen surrounded the house and mercilessly killed all of them. The chairman of Magavu Development Association, Joseph Guankat, also confirmed the killing, describing it as callous. At number three, former governor of Anambra State, Willie Obiano, has been arraigned by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, on allegations of money laundering. Obiano appeared before Judge Eyang Eho at a federal high court in Abuja on Wednesday where he pleaded not guilty to the nine-count charge brought against him by the anti-graft agency. During the arraignment, EFCC counsel Silvanus Tahir requested that the defendants be remanded in custody until the trial commences. After considering the arguments presented, Judge Eho ruled in favor of granting bail to Obiano based on the administrative terms previously set by the EFCC. At number four, the Yondo State Governor Loki Aedatiwa has dissolved the state's executive council with immediate effect. The governor also terminated the appointments of all senior special assistants and special assistants. In a statement on Wednesday, his chief press secretary, Ebenezer Adenia, said all members of the cabinet are to hand over to the permanent secretaries or the most senior administrative officers in their respective offices. The development also comes almost a year after Aidatua was sworn in as the governor of the state following the death of Rotimi Akaridolu, the former governor. At number five, an APC member in Kano, Abdul Majid Mustafa, has been remanded in a correctional facility following his remarks on a radio program about the speculated plan to reinstate the former emir of Kano, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi II. Mustafa criticized former Governor Rabi Kwankoso, who had suggested revisiting the Emirate law and Sanusi's dethronement by the previous administration. Mustafa was charged with disturbing public peace but pleaded not guilty. The prosecution claimed his comments contravened the Kano State Penal Code law, while the defense requested bail on health grounds. At number six, a former Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the ruling All Progressives Congress, Yekini Nabina, has urged President Balotinubu to consider relocating the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, and Nigeria Ports Authority to the Niger Delta region for efficiency. The APC chieftain also appealed that the Federal Ministry of Trade and Investment be moved to either Kano or Anambra states where people trade in high proportion. Nabina's request comes a few days after the federal government indicated an interest in moving some parts of CBN and FAN to Lagos State for the efficiency of its activities. At number seven, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Olayemi Kadoso, has expressed his expectation that headline inflation will decrease to 21.4% in 2024. The announcement was made during the launch of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group's Macroeconomic Outlook Reports for the year. The governor highlighted that the CBN's inflation targeting policy aims to rein in inflation and achieve the projected rate. At number eight, 
The Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, EITI, has demanded more clarification from the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NMPCL, over its 20% equity in the Dangote Petroleum Refinery. The transparency body made this known on Tuesday during a visit of the EITI delegation to Nigeria. Speaking to journalists at the Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NEITI headquarters, Abuja, Alex Gordy, EITI technical director, charged NNPCL to be more transparent as there are a lot of questions surrounding the company's acquisition of 20% stake in the refinery. He said the oil firm should disclose the equity mode of payment as all that was in the public domain was that NNPC would pay for the equity acquisition with crude oil deliveries. At number nine, the Committee to Protect Journalists, CPJ, has released a report revealing a worrisome trend of increasing numbers of incarcerated journalists in sub-Saharan Africa. The report highlights a rise from 31 imprisoned journalists in 2022 to 47 as of December 1st, 2023. Eritrea ranks as the leading violator of press freedom in Africa with 16 journalists currently behind bars. Disturbingly, the country holds the seventh position globally for cases of imprisoned journalists without any charges being filed. Ethiopia follows closely behind Eritrea with eight journalists in detention, while Cameroon has six. Finally, at number 10, Chris Hutton has been dismissed from his position as the coach of the Ghana national team following the team's premature exit from the Africa Cup of Nations. The decision was announced by the Ghana Football Association, GFA, on Tuesday after Ghana's elimination was confirmed. The GFA stated Chris Hutton has been relieved of his duties as head coach of the senior national team with immediate effect. The executive council has also taken a decision to dissolve the technical team of the Black Stars. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.